So with that framework and setup, let's uh, let's jump into the first segment of uh, the, the program here today and the news. We, uh, we'd like to talk about some significant issues and development around global ESG performance, institutional frameworks, and some new general news items. Mike, will you take the first? Thank you, Mark. Well, I feel like, uh, you know, April and May and June has been pretty intense. And, uh, you know, I feel like almost coming off tour, going from New York to California to Chicago to uh, wonder, wonderful St. Louis, where the GRI produced a nice event in conjunction with St. Louis University and the RCGA, which stands for the Regional Commerce Growth Association. And we were able to sit down with, with Mike Wallace, the U.S. Director, uh, Focal Point, as well as Herman Mulder, who is the, the new chairman of GRI. Uh, their working groups are in, in full swing. You can go to the, the website to find out the progression on the GRI G4 guidelines uh, and where they are. And uh, if you go to the, the full screen graphic now on Rio Plus 20, GRI has a very big presence down there. You can download this along with a, an entire packet to find out exactly which panels the GRI will be speaking at, the events, the locations, uh, their entire executive staff is down there. So if you are going to be in Rio 20, which just kicked off yesterday in Brazil, uh, I really encourage you to attend these events because the GRI has been making great strides in terms of their footprint here. And I think it started that hot, the Heartland Conference and is, really has a ripple effect throughout the, the entire U.S. Mark? What do, you, what do you think about that? Fantastic, Michael. You know, it was a wonderful opportunity to sit down with Herman Mulder, the chairman of the GRI, in, in our discussions and regarding a global adoption of the GRI framework, not only globally across the globe, but uh, also here in the U.S. Now, uh, shifting gears for a second, another development in the marketplace, another example of making common the ESG reporting framework activities between operators and the financial markets. The Sustainability Accounting Standards Board has been chartered to look at establishing materiality ESG issues that will be foundational to reporting on the 10K and the, the corporate SEC reports. Uh, many may be uh, familiar with the FASB, which is a Financial Accounting Standards Board, and their charter by the SEC is to establish the generally accepted accounting principles. So the SASB is the sister operator, if you will, in the market sense, and this is where materiality meets ESG and reporting and linking it back to the bottom line. So take a look at the structural connections point here. Now, there are U.S.-based companies, and there's also linkage in the framework for the, the model relative to the global international reporting framework, GRI, as we mentioned. And, of course, in the rankings, as you mentioned earlier, Michael, there's the Global Initiative for Sustainability Rankings. So SASB, in its development protocol now, is uh, in, in schedule to launch the industry-specific working groups here the next month, and I believe they're also scheduled for a global launch uh, September this year. All right, so, Michael, back to you, please. Well, you know, SASB is, I think, going to be very interesting. And, you know, as you can see from that jigsaw screen, there's a lot of moving parts. And we're involved in, in most of them. Um, uh, we, full disclosure, we've just been invited to be on the advisory board for SASB and we'll be participating in the industry work groups uh, to be able to add both the voice for executives, as Mark's expertise, uh, on the operational side, and then mine, which is the sustainable investing. And which would be a nice segue into the, the next news item, which is about mainstreaming sustainable investing. And you'll, you'll hear like the common statistics, which is about one in every eight dollars is invested by a professional asset manager using some type of ESG or SRI screening methodology. So uh, again, ESG, environmental, social, and governance, SRI, which is socially responsible investing, where Traditionally, it would be negative screening. A lot more are using it as positive screening, as we talked about before, helping identify the companies that are going to be financially sustainable and are, are good stewards of all forms of capital, human capital, uh, financial capital, and bill capital. What I'm excited about this portion is these are three companies, Morgan Stanley, Smith Barney, BlackRock, and Bank of America, which are staple names in the, in the Wall Street and the financial service community, and they've all taken uh, big strides in making sustainability more investable. So Morgan Stanley Smith Barney recently announced that they launched a impact investing platform which is going to allow all of their financial advisors to have access to this information to, make, to be able to make better long-term investment decisions for the clients. BlackRock, who was also at the GRI conference, uh, has restated their commitment to use ESG analysis to be able to also make better investment decisions for the long run for their clients. And Bank of America made a pretty big and bold statement that they are going to re-up on their commitment to helping their clients, uh, and they're going to be investing $50 billion in environmental initiatives over the next 10 years. 
So um, we're pretty excited about this because we really see it as a, the tipping point because it's mainstream brick and mortar companies that are doing this in terms of real investment analysis. Mark, back to you. That's an amazing confluence of, of market making investment capital and the confluence of companies investing in their operations to improve their performance. Uh, you mentioned earlier uh, the, the human capital aspect and a recent story that was daylighted by CNN regarding the Freedom Project, which is their initiative to focus on uh, child trafficking and labor issues, human slavery here in the 21st century. There are some uh, 30 million people globally under the uh, slavery protocol, if you would. And uh, here's an opportunity where this links to human capital and you think about ESG reporting. This is a social performance indicator. So corporations who are looking at structurally how they report on GRI and social performance can look at operationally where the risk is in their labor protocols for human e ethics and human standards and labor standards and structure how that links to labor supply chain. There's operational risk there in hand. So at CNN, they led this story, they discussed also a specific protocol for the cocoa industry, which we'll take a deeper dive on in the analysis coming up shortly.